It's a pleasure to meet all of you today online on Wednesday afternoon. I believe every time when we meet, we are creating um, extra affinity or deepen our affinity with Lao Tzu. I hope that in the next one and a half hour, we can be inspired by Lao Tzu's wisdom. And I, I hope that uh, Lao Tzu's spirit can come to resonate with us. Today, we will be studying chapter 17 together, Tao De Jing chapter 17. This chapter, it's short, but I, I think it's very challenging to talk about because it's short. So sometimes when we talk about a short chapter, uh, we don't really know what Lao Tzu is up to. So there is a lot of room for interpretation, which I will point out to you as we go along the chapter. So chapter 17, the title is Bian Dao Zhang. So the first word is Bian. Bian, it's, it means change, transformation. It's not stable. So it's always um, making, making some kind of uh, variation. And of course, the second word is Dao. Dao, never change. When we study in the chapter title, we should not use this one as the adjective of Dao. In other words, these two things are, or these two characters should be independent from each other. Therefore, I come up with a title that is called the change and the Tao. And the change, where does the change come from? It comes from the time, comes from the society, comes from the period, comes from the people, comes from the government, comes from the environment. So the, the society that we are in now, since ancient time to now, it's always changing. And the only thing that does not change is Tao. Therefore, um, another title can be Tao in a changing environment. So this will be the most suitable title for this chapter. So I'll also talk about this chapter as, as an expression of uh, sadness, helplessness, and hopelessness. It also talks about the, the decline of morality ah. or the, the ethics of the human over a period of time. And as you can see from this diagram, Tao, it's always same, it's always there, but the environment keep changing. So this is Lao Tzu's expression. And miraculously, he made the prediction 2000 years ago. So right now we are in 2020 and add another 500 years is uh, 2520. So he made the prediction that there will be a lot of change in the environment 2,520 years ago. And unfortunately, all his predictions come to life. So it's just amazing that he has such a prediction. So as time goes down further, there is deterioration of spirituality and there's an open display of uh, animosity towards to each other among the human. Say that a majority of people are still ignorant of Dharma, ignorance of Tao and uh, the truthfulness and tolerance and mercy level in human mind just continue to decline. So it's very unfortunate. This is Lao Tzu's expression about Tao and its environment in chapter 17. This is the content for chapter 17 and uh, it's short and I kind of group them into two sections. So here it talks about the different timing or different era that Tao surrounded by the environment. This section is about the, the timing. And the bottom one is kind of like Lao Tzu's hope, Lao Tzu's assertion that we don't have to stay down in the last era. We can change that atmosphere. He come up with this four solution so that we can study. I want to point out to you that on the last sentence, all people say I did it naturally. Throughout the whole chapter, Lao Tzu only give a pronoun in the last sentence, which is um, all the people, all the citizen, and I. And the other one, I kind of feel in myself. Okay, let's start from the first verse. In the primeval era, they do not know they have it. Could Lao Tzu be talking about they have it Tao? 
because here in this sentence, Lao Tzu skip the pronoun on this one, and then this one, and this one. So basically, there's three things that Lao Tzu did not give a pronoun. But uh, let's just read the sentence as is. In the primeval era, they do not know they have Tao. And we can further paraphrase as, in the primeval era, people live according to Tao, yet they do not know they are already living, seeking behave according to Tao. So this, this will make more sense. So by looking at this first verse, we understand um, the first two character can be interpreted in different perspectives. First one is primeval. The second one is the highest being or Tao or emperor. Some other translator use um, the second one or the third one. But for our study today here, we will use primeval. So this is the first era. And Lao Tzu say this is the highest level of Tao. People were totally immersed in Tao. And this is the world of utopia. So in the daily life, they live in Tao. We are talking about the ancient time. People are already living in Tao, but then they don't know there's Tao around them. So there is no teaching of Tao. There's no teacher at all. And there's no, nobody talk about virtue. Nobody talk about merit because everybody is already totally immersed in Tao. Whatever they do, whatever they say, uh, whatever they speak, everything manifest from their inner being. So during that time, there was no leader. Um, there is no leader with uh, virtue. Everybody is virtuous and there is no senior to guide them because there is no, there is no deviation of senior and junior and there is no saint and sages because everybody is saint and sages. And of course, there's no recognition for a philanthropist. Nowadays in our society, we see some, somebody, they, they did such a good deed, and then um, they are in the social media, on the newspaper, on the radio, but in the ancient time, there was no recognition for such good deed. And of course, people, have no ego, they are not selfish, and they are not arrogant, and they don't need meditation like what we, what some of us need to do, and um, they don't need to suppress their greed, they, know, they don't need to suppress their want, because everything that they manifest, it does not have greed, does not have desire. So everything that flow out from their mind, from their true self, it's all love, benevolence, virtue, integrity, honest, sincerity, and innocence. Um, so number two, there's no social class and they have a concept of oneness. So they are in the environment totally feel and surrounded with doubt, but they do not know it. So I want to give you an analogy. Do you know that in Canada, there was a company, they sell Canadian air to the people in China and they make a big profit out of it because the people in China, they have a very high air pollution rate. If they can breathe in some fresh air, it will consider a luxury to them. So there's uh, this Canadian company who are very smart. They think of this good business idea. They, they start to sell um, fresh air to them. And you, you can see it's um, $13.75 for bottled air and $21 for pure oxygen. This is the price for five years ago. <laughs> imagine the price for now. It's hard to imagine, because right now we live in USA and we feel that um, the air is still acceptable. But you know, right now we are in the pandemic. Even in last year, when you go into some kind of, um, say shopping center or go to your store, do you feel that air is so important? But before, 2020, we are not aware how important is the air. We did not feel the importance of the fresh air, clean air, unpolluted air. Only until year 2020, we realized the importance of breathing healthy air, right? So by the time when we realized there is an importance of the air, 
that will be the time that the air quality goes down. So taking you back here, people in the ancient time, they live in the environment of Tao, but they do not know the importance of Tao, yet they practice Tao every day. In the, it's like uh, their daily living. And they have the total um, ideology of you know, the concept of oneness. You and I are the same because we live together in the, in the community or in the same tribe. So there's no differentiation of you and me. There's no differentiation of uh, they or he or her. So everybody is working together for their living. No argument, no differentiation. So this is the well-behaved society without any government. So Lao is talking about the prehistoric period. And this is far beyond our historical record, such as uh, Paleolithic and Neolithic era. So here I have a slide to show you. So right now we are in 2021. That's our current time. And let's move back here. Ancient age, 3000 BC to 476 AC. You can see an arrow coming down. So Lao Tzu is born around this time. So Lao Tzu talks about the primeval era. Could he be talking about this period or this period? Or even before that, we don't know. Okay, so in the primeval era, people do not know they have Tao. So this is Lao Tzu's analogy of uh, our original pure consciousness. So when we look at Lao Tzu's text, we want to take a step further. What does Lao Tzu really mean? So we all have original pure consciousness, which is our pure consciousness in the early stage, in the initial stage. And in, uh, in chapter 16, in our last session, we talk about return to the origin. That's where we come from. And that's where we are going to return to, right? We are going to return to our source. We come from the source. We were wandering around and we are still wandering around and we are on our journey going back to our root, to our source. In the previous chapter, Lao Tzu, use uh, this three analogy to describe the original state of consciousness. First one is infant. Second one is lumber. It, it has been cut from the trunk, but it has not been processed yet. And uh, so this is the analogy of lumber. And wuji, original state of consciousness before movement and change. And uh, here I have a diagram to show you. This is the, the, the simple aging diagram. You can see there's total eight um, triagram here. And when you go down below, so Wuji is right here. It's, it's before the formation of Tai Chi. So it's before anything that starts to move. It's a state of uh, stillness. It's a state of uh, tranquility, yeah, state of uh, Non movement and uh, talking about infant original state of consciousness before it's being polluted. We all love babies, and baby give us smiles. We feel joy when we see the baby, except when the baby poop. <laughs> then we need to change diaper. So Lao Tzu use uh, this three analogy to describe the primeval era that we can refer from his other chapter in Tao Te Ching. So in cultivation, without awareness of Tao, it means number one, even though we have the six senses, but we don't need to intentionally control them. And when one person is in this stage, one person feel the total unity with this person, me, others, and everybody surrounding. And when we can achieve that, of course, we are in communion with heaven and earth and Tao. Have you ever go to the supermarket or go to go out, go out of your house and then you see some stranger and 
that day you feel so happy and you feel so joyful. You just want to say hi to people. Hello, hello. And then just want to spread good energy to them. So that's the concept of oneness. You want to engage to them. You want to communicate with them. You want to get to know them and you want to talk to them about Tao. That's this stage, the total communion of oneness in Tao. And then um, in terms of, of cultivation, when people do not know that they have doubt, it means that somebody did something good and then we give them a compliment and then they will say, oh no, it's nothing. It's nothing. I don't, don't even mention about it. Oh, this is, um, I just did it naturally. There's nothing to talk about. It's just something small, very, very small, not to even mention about it. So this is somebody who does the good deed, but is not aware of the good deed and even there is people giving compliment. This person say, oh, no, 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 there's nothing good about it. It's just my natural instinct. So in Lao Tzu's idea, in this era, people do not know that they have a doubt. This is the highest level. This is the society that Lao Tzu wants the society to return to. So Tao is in living. It's on how we speak, how we eat, and how we drive, when we drive, are we driving according to Tao? Are we allowing people to cut in front of us without cussing? <laughs> are we still have good mood when somebody cut our line? When we do the cooking, there's a lot of preparation that we need to do. Are we manifesting our, our positive mind when we are doing the cooking? So the original pure consciousness is what we are all inborn with. That's what we are given from the source. And as we can see in the Buddhism term, it's called the Buddha nature. Sometimes in the Tao sermon, we say, oh, we have to have our Buddha nature, our inner nature. Buddha nature, it's the same as inner nature. It's also same as uh, original pure consciousness. It's just synonym. But here I want to bring out to you that Buddha nature, the term Buddha, we all have Buddha instinct in us that we can see from this Chinese character, Fo. Fo means Buddha. Everybody know it, right? And we can look at Buddha, this term, <clears throat> and we can separate them into two texts. The one on the left, it means man. The one on the right, it means not. And to understand this, we can look at this uh, entomology here. By the way, I pull out this picture from this website here. So you can see there's a person here, as we can see that there's a man on the left, right? So on the right, it looks like some kind of branch, bamboo, some kind of thing, but it's curvy. Uh, this person is using, or somebody is using some kind of a uh, string or some kind of rope to make correction on this uh, sticks or this branch so that it can be straight. In other words, this part, it means Maintain, correction, bending to straight shape and make an adjustment. So what is the term for? With the understanding of this, we can come up with our comprehension as for, it means keeping the true self. We have the true self and the false self. We need to keep the true self. But the false self mostly comes from our human body and human mind. And we need to make correction. And this is the correction, right? So we need to make correction in our mind on the false self. And specifically in Buddhism term, they have this uh, term called three poisons, which is desire, greed, and illusion. And like I say, we all have Buddha nature and we all have this one in us. If we can make correction, adjustment, maintain on our false self, then we will reach to our original pure consciousness. The next slide is about my entomology on this term, Tai and Zi. So this word Tai is big. As you can see this character, this character, it means big. But underneath the big, there is a little dot underneath the big. It means big is not enough, but more big, like bigger or biggest. So that's what it means by big. 
Yeah, and then uh, the second word is zi, I often translate it as no. So no, this word zi is made of two characters. This one means arrow, mm -hmm. and this one is mouth. Mouth, it means uh, our speech. So when we use an arrow, we want to shoot on the target. And whatever we shoot on the target, it has to be right on the target. It has to be correct about our speech. When we say something, it has to be correct. It has to deliver the truth. It has to be sincere, has to be honest. No, no lying, no faking, and no bluffing, no show your arrogance. It's really a pictogram that delivers its meaning, literally and figuratively. So here we come down to the next verse. And this verse is about the slight declining in the second era. After a period of time, all people still have good idea about Tao. And this is the second era. Next, they hold dearly to it or lay hold dearly to Tao. So in this timing, it's a well-governed society with government and this well-governed society is led by a virtuous leader. Most of the people still have Tao resonated with them and they like, they hold closely in their heart their virtuous leader and they will obey the leader. And people during this time behave mostly according to their inner self and can maintain the loving and kind inner being. And because during this time, there is a leader who is very virtuous and the people are still very much behave according to Tao. So this is well-governed society. It's a good, good community, I would say. In terms of our cultivation, how can we apply to this? It's someone who wants to be close to Tao. I will say that most of you who come online today will fall into this category. We want to hold closely to Tao. This kind of people want to live half in Tao and half in new in life. What do I mean by that? Because um, most of us have to work. We, we dedicate half of our time working. But after our work hour, there are some people who want to indulge themselves in other activity. But most of us, the people who are online here, will want to commit themselves to study Tao, study Tao Te Ching, or uh, come online, join the online Zoom session so that we can study Tao together. And some people are more devoted in Tao mission and they like to study Tao. And if they are disengaged from Tao, then they will feel distressed. I think I fall into this category. <laughs> so it's a question to ask yourself, are you in this category? It used to be like uh, in 2020, before 2020, I used to go to temple periodically. And if there's one week that, that I don't go, I will feel low. I will feel maybe some kind of anxiety if in a certain period that I am so far from the temple or not study Tao Te Ching, I will feel guilty. <laughs> so I hold Tao closely to my heart and I treat Tao as part of myself. Are you like this? The next one is then they complement it or they complement Tao. So this is the decline of Tao in the third era. After a period of time, some people have some idea about Tao. In this time, they have idea about Tao. So it's just like uh, a candle. On the candle, there's um, some light. And then sometimes the light is on, sometimes it goes very dim, sometimes it goes very bright. So it's like on and off. So during this time, people could no longer submit under the virtuous leader. Such as in the previous slide, people submit under a virtuous leader, but this one doesn't. Only the leaders who have made significant contribution to the society are worthy enough to be complement. Uh, in the Chinese history, there's a lot of army general after they um, conquer the previous dynasty, after they obtain certain territory, they can officially 
become the emperor. They can officially become the prime minister or、um, the governor or the officer.、Uh, one example that I can give to you is King Wen,、uh, who is one of the author in Yi Jing. Right, King Wen. He was a virtuous person. Yeah, he was、uh, captured in in the jail of Shang Dynasty, but later on he was able to give honor in an annotation to Yi Jing the sixty four hexagram. And his son, King Wu, with his bravery, he conquered the Shang Dynasty. And with such a great leader and such a great warrior, people support him to be a good leader. Not sure if he's virtuous or not, but anybody who can overturn the previous dynasty, who can、uh, help the country obtain a greater territory, then that person is worthwhile to be a great leader. So during this time, people or human is measured by success and accomplishment. And you can see this picture here. So in terms of a cultivation, it's someone who prays Tao. This is the time that the, the deviation comes. If I keep saying about oh Tao is great, I have to practice Tao because Tao is great, but. Have you ever heard of somebody say, "I have to go to the church because everybody go to church, and if I go to church, they will praise me, they will compliment me. I want to be、uh, rewarded, and then、um, maybe they are taking attendance. I will be in the roster. So it's the person who want to be praised, want to be complimented. So you can see that it's an idea of、uh, declining in、uh, Tao." So this is the third era, and this one is the fourth one. After a period of time, most people have no idea about Tao. Next, they fear it or they fear Tao. So in this time, people's morality declined further. The government will set up a lot of punishment rules. Regulation, law, legislation are used to against the violence. And during this time, many people are disciplined. So it looks like the society is well governed, but that's because they are fearful for the laws. Do you know that in North Korea, there are something that we think it doesn't make sense, but it's really reinforced there.、Uh, the men they have to have a certain haircut.、Um, they cannot cut their hair too long. It has to be measured. And then they cannot wear jeans because if they wear jeans, that means they are pro-American because jean is a symbol of、uh, American style. <laughs> the next one that I want to share with you is that in Korea, if there is any government official die or pass, and when you attend to their funeral, which everybody need to go, when you go, you have to show that you are crying. If you are not crying, then You will, you will receive a bullet.、Uh, that's very sad. And then the second one, <laughs> the second one is、uh, China's one-child policy. So China has one-child policy. So if they only have one child, they will receive a lot of benefit. But if they have second or third child, they will not receive the incentive compared to the couple who only have one child, and they will maybe receive. Like a higher tax, well, a lot of privilege will be taken away. And third is the Muslim country. When the woman get married, they have to convert their religion, and the compulsory hijab that we know. It's pretty sad. <laughs> Some women they are pro hijab, but I think most of it is、uh, against hijab. Here I shouldn't just put Iran. The recent.、Um, Big news that we have in the past month is Afghanistan. The Taliban they want the woman to wear、uh, burqa, which is to cover head to toe. To me, hijab is supposed to be a symbol of a、uh, devotion, but when there's too much discipline, too much regulation, and too much law in, imposed, it becomes a suppression. People, although they want, they, although they are compulsed. To follow it, but they lose the sense of devotion already. So it's pretty unfortunate. So in terms of our cultivation, 
it's the people that when they receive Tao or when they study Tao or encounter Dharma, yet they have not practiced it and they fear the truth. In Buddhism, it talks about reincarnation, right? There's a six realm of reincarnation. I want to give you the best example. The Christian, uh, they will say that uh, if you don't believe in Jesus, then uh, you will go to hell. So this is like a, a scary thing. They will say something to make people afraid. And when people are afraid, they will be compelled to come to the church. So let's ask us. Do you feel the truth? Do you feel Tao? And do you think that if you don't practice Tao, then you will fall into the realm of reincarnation? Some people, maybe they don't care. Who cares about reincarnation? <laughs> because I'm already in one. But uh, that's not an issue. The issue is that um, if you study Tao and if you have faith in Tao, you, you should not be afraid of it. And the people who are afraid of Tao, that means you don't, they don't really know Tao occasionally in the temple sometimes i will hear people say hey can you come next week next week is your turn okay so when we say that it becomes an obstacle for others like for me we have this meetup on wednesday and then uh, professor sherry choose uh, classes on thursday i never never ask people hey mark you have to come today okay and if you don't come, then I will feel bad. And so and so, you have to come. Did you sign up? I want to remind you to, uh, on a certain time, to attend our session. So when we talk, we try not to be an obstacle for others to practice Tao. We don't want to be in that environment. And at the same time, we want to be people's stepping stone, but not a stumbling block. Okay. So this one is next. They despise it or they despise Tao. Um, this period is uh, the total decline in the last era. So after a period of time, most people are against Tao. So this term here, Wu, it means despise. So the despise, this term here, it can go two ways. One is uh, the despise or the insult come from top to bottom. Or the other one is from bottom to top. As you can see, the top to bottom, it's all the verb here. Insult, disgrace, despise, defame, slander, abuse, persecution. Yeah, this reminds me that in the IKT, um, our IKT uh, heritage, there's a lot of uh, Tao patriarch. Um, they want to spread Tao, but they ended up being prosecuted and being persecuted. In other words, they are being murdered. So this is the cause. So when the top impose all this insult to the bottom, this is what the, the leader will receive from the citizen. And that will be the effect. The effect is the violence, the protest, the riot, the lawlessness, and the disturbance. It works two ways. So we don't really know what Lao Tzu means. So I will just point out to you, it can be two ways because everything is like a two-way street. So the law of enforcement often abuse and corrupt, corruptness system. And this is not just in the ancient time. It happens in our current society too, in all the country. Often the innocent one are wrongly prosecuted so when this happened, uh, it, it means that the dictators and tyrants surface. So this remind me the Qin Shi Huang, uh, who is the emperor who built a great wall. In order for him to build a great wall, I think uh, 300 to 700,000 of people were slave and ended up dead during their mission. So when uh, strict law is reinforced, it can bind people's uh, physical behavior, but not mentally. And it brings harm to people, historical and cultural sites. Isn't it true that Jin Su Huang, he destroyed a lot of historical record? He also did to try to destroy Dao De Jing too, no, that, 
the one that we are studying now. And he also destroyed Confucius Analog and many, many historical documents that's from the ancient Sen and sages. And also cultural side. Recent time, we see that um, I think uh, a lot of uh, Buddha's statue were being taken down by Islamic country. So those will be an uh, insult for the Tao and for the Dharma. So in terms of our cultivation, have you been insulted or mocked for being a vegetarian or practicing Tao? I have because uh, several of my family members, uh, it was like uh, maybe 10 years ago. I remember very well because uh, I don't just have one family member. I was surrounded by several family members. You want to be vegetarian? You think you are, you are going to be superior than us? So that will be like an insult or mock for me to being a vegetarian. In our style of a cultivation, we will always be mocked, being insult at a certain period of time. If we encounter that, it will just make our strength stronger. Number two, have you been mocked as having blind faith? Have you? I'm sure we all have, uh, especially from the uh, Christian. So the Christian like to tease the, the Buddhist or the Taoist. Oh, you guys are idol worshiper. Idol worshiper. Who are you praying? Who are you praying to? So we are praying to Buddha. You know who is Buddha? Do you believe that we all come from the source? So Buddha come from the source. We also come from the source. And because we all come from the source, we are the original pure consciousness, which I discussed in the earlier slide. So we have this Buddha nature in us. The Buddha statue is just to remind us that we also have Buddha nature in us. So when we bow to Buddha, who are we bowing to? We are bowing to ourselves because we are bowing to the Buddha nature in ourselves. When we go to temple, when we go to the Tao temple, the first thing that we do is the arrival ritual. And then we do Zuo Yi and then Neo. So when we do the arrival ritual, we want to greet to our heavenly mother. And when we greet to all the Buddha, the Buddha statue on the altar, who are we greeting to? We are actually greeting to ourselves. And when we do the Zuo Yi, we do the Zuo Yi like this. We are doing the gesture to ourselves too. It's not like we are doing the worshiping to the Buddha on the altar. This gesture will help us to remind ourselves we are that original pure consciousness that comes from the source. So our conscience is Buddha. So we don't really have blind faith. The people who claim us that we have blind faith, they just don't know much about Tao. That's all. Okay, number three, criticizing Tao defaming Tao, hindering others for cultivation. In Chinese, we have a saying, if you have a good thought, even if you have not started, the guardian angel has arrived. If you have an evil thought, even though you haven't started your evil conduct, the demon already arrived. So I'm sure none of you have this. So when other people criticizing Tao, defaming Tao, hindering others for cultivation, these are the people who have no idea what Tao is. And that's why they would insult, they will make the despicable language to Tao, to the temple, to the temple volunteer, to the temple master. We just finished the discussion on the five level, on the five era, on the highest level, second, third, fourth and fifth. So the highest one, people are not aware of Tao. In this one, it's uh, in terms of a government. So people are well behaved. And in this society, there is no government. The second one, the people love Tao and they love the government because the government is run by a virtuous leader. Number three, people compliment their leader because the, this leader give great contribution to the country. And number four, the people have much fear because there is law and regulation being imposed. And if they don't follow, they will be punished. And number five, 
Um, the government despise to the citizen, uh, often prosecute the innocents, and people protest and criticize the government. So this is like insulting, you insulted me, so I insulted you. <laughs> so what does it mean in terms of a cultivation? Adhere to the original self, same as the primeval era. I don't have Tao. I don't have Tao. Whatever I do, I'm not aware of this is Tao. I'm doing something good, but I'm not aware of it. So I just do it. I'm not even thinking about it. So this is the highest level. And this is the only way that can keep Tao in us forever. How do you maintain Tao? This is the stage that we want to return to. Number two is hold dearly to Tao in daily life. If we cannot adhere to this level, at least we want to achieve to this level. We hold Tao closely to our heart and incorporate Tao into our daily life. It's okay to think about it all the time <laughs> because this is just the second level. At least it's not a third one. The third one is praise to Tao. When the people praise to Tao, but it does not have effect on themselves. They just like to talk about Tao. Hey, I want to go to Tao temple. I want to go to church. I want to go to this and that so that I can be praised. So are you in this level or this level? Let's think about it. And then number four, um, the people acknowledge to doubt and they have fear. There's a misconception. People think that they receive doubt, they have to be a vegetarian. This is a common fear, which is not true. So have no fear. If you receive doubt, you don't need to be a vegetarian. <laughs> okay, so people, um, they are people who are afraid. So they stop coming to the temple. So in this category, they have fear in Tao. They have fear in doing the ritual because um, they think that it's an idol worshiper. And that's because they have no awareness of the importance of the gesture of the worshiping. The gesture of worshiping is to remind ourselves we are a Buddha and we have this inborn Buddha nature. And number five, criticizing Tao hinder others' practice, which I think none of us will do that here. So uh, by looking at this, which stage are you? Some people, they come to the temple, they start from this one. They start to criticize in Tao, but then when they understand Tao a bit more, then they start to accept the rules and regulation, uh, but they don't have much awareness. And then when they understand more about Tao, they start to praise Tao, and then they walk their way to a higher up. So which stage are you in? And which stage did you start? Lao Tzu say, do never go against Tao because we are part of Tao, right? We are part of Tao. Everything that, that we see visibly is part of Tao. Heaven and earth are all from Tao. Everything comes from Tao. If there's anybody who deny Tao, they are denying themselves. Lao Tzu pretty much advocate the society in this level. So in terms of our cultivation, adhere to an original self is the best level, it's the highest level. It's a level that we should return to. Be like a baby, be like a lumber, and go back to Wuji. So this is like a breathing fresh air without awareness. And like, like the fish in the water, uh, fish does not know that the fish is in the water. We are in doubt, but we are not aware we are study Tao, we are practicing Tao, we are doing good deed. The next one is people without sufficient belief, they will not be trusted. I, as I mentioned earlier, this chapter is very short and there is a pronoun missing. So here I just kind of fill in. So this is what I fill in, people. And even this one is what I fill in. So I, I like to interpret as uh, people without sufficient belief, people will not be trusted. Or you can interpret as a virtuous leader without sufficient belief, he will not be trusted. I don't know which one Lao Tzu is referring to. So let's just leave it open like this. This word is being repeated twice, Xing. Xing means belief, trust, faith, and confidence. So this can work both ways, just like what I put down here as pronoun. It can be people or it can be virtuous ruler. The people on the top need to have trust in Tao, need to have trust in the people. 
and the people need to trust the leader. Otherwise, without trust, without belief, without faith, without awareness of Tao, then the people on the top will insult and create violence to the citizen, and the citizen will protest, will commit unlawful act against the leader. So this verse is referred to the previous one. The previous one we talk about one despise it. So pretty much when one despise it, that means this person is not aware of Tao. So a leader without virtue and integrity, the ruler often abuse his authority and mistreat the people. People feel compelled and control. How would people have trust in the ruler? So in terms of our cultivation, if we are in the Tao mission or when we do the Tao study, do we really believe in Tao? Do we believe in 100%? If your answer is yes, that would be great. This is what Lao Tzu Wang, have total belief. But if your answer is, ah, oh, I don't know, I just, I think Tao is good. My friend told me Tao is good. My friend told me to study, so that's why I'm here. <laughs> so that means you don't have sufficient belief. So without sufficient belief, you will not be trusted, right? So Lao Tzu encourages us to live in Tao and constantly observe ourselves so that we can manifest Tao in our life, in our speaking, in our speech and behavior. When did you receive Tao? Do you feel that your life changed? Do you feel that your personality changed? Do you feel that your temper changed? Do you feel that many things change? If you feel that, that means Tao has significant effect in you. And most likely that means you have sufficient belief. However, if you receive Tao and then you think that, oh, my life is still same piece of shit. <laughs> my temper is still the same. Why, why am I still living in hell? I received Tao, I supposed to be better. My life supposed supposed to be better. Why am I still same? That means uh, you don't have a sufficient belief. So this one is it's interesting to explain. So I translate it as at leisure. They limit in their speech. So this can be singular too. This is Lao Tzu's assertive expression. Let me start with this term because this expression here it comes from these two texts let me start from this one this one exclamatory this is like the expression of oh oh or like oh like like a assertive or a hopeful expression so it does not have a meaning but <laughs> But I will say that it's an expression of Lao Tzu's hope that we together can make the change. The reason that Lao Tzu give his wisdom on Tao Te Ching is because Lao Tzu want to help the society to be a better one, whether it's in his society or in the future society, for the future generation. So I will say it's an expression of hope. And that hope can be assertive. It can be done. And it's hopeful. And eventually it will take people to get together, but there's positive hope. The second one is uh, yo, this word is yo. Literally it means uh, use free time for enjoyment, such as retiree. They can um, get up whenever they want to, go out the door whenever they want to, they can go home whenever they want to, they can drink a coffee whenever they want to. They don't have appointment. They don't need to work. There's no schedule at all. So this term is use free time for enjoyment, such as a retiree who are at their retirement will experience this. So figuratively, it means somebody who has free will to do whatever things they want to. It's uh, voluntary. Everything flow naturally and everything adhere to conscience because this person does not have a schedule. So he, he allow his mind to flow. Does not need to kiss ass to anybody at work because this person is already retired. So this word 
in Chinese, we often use this word to describe a person at an old age. Yeah, so it's interesting. So Lao Tzu use this word. Or I can say that this two word, it means wu wei, is to do things naturally. So to do things naturally, or wu wei, they limit their speech. So here in the speech, it can mean not just the speech, also include the rules, the laws, the re registration, and the punishment. And the, this word is gui. Gui means, uh, literally, it means something very costly, such as diamond, something very valuable, precious. When they are pure, it comes in rare, right? So it doesn't come often. It's very rare. It becomes very precious. Figuratively, it means limited, rare, and scarce. So when you combine these two words together, it means have a sincere and diligent talk. There's no flattering, no gossiping, no boastfulness, and there's no nonsense talk. Because the more talk that you have, the more deviation that you are going to be far from Tao. So in this uh, verse, it's talking about when a ruler trusts all people and treat them with Tao, with a previous verse, only with belief in Tao, he will be trusted. So all people will conduct themselves naturally according to Tao. All behavior will flow naturally adhere to the heavenly way. Cultivation, it means uh, speak less than we know. So I want to spend a little time talking about how to govern or how to govern ourselves, not, not necessarily in a political perspective. Wu Wei. We all know what is Wu Wei. Wu Wei means doing things naturally. Here, I want to give a, uh, another definition. Move with the flow of life. That means you move unintentionally, uh, voluntary. You follow the flow of life. A lot of time, we hear that, oh, just need to flow with your life. Just be natural. It's very difficult to grasp. How do I be natural? If I work like hell, <laughs> how do I be natural if I'm in a family chaos? How do I do that? So here I'm going to give you a good example. I read a book and on the book, it says that um, this author is driving on the street. Uh, we all have experience driving, right? So when we drive, uh, we will see that the tree passing by us, maybe there's a dog passing by us, a woman, uh, having a leash on the dog passing by us, and a flower in the building, the asphalt passing by us, the street light passing by us as we cruise along the street. So it's natural for us to focus in the front and then have the scenery on two sides passing by us naturally, right? We all have this experience. <laughs> when you are driving, your thought just continue to flow. Maybe you see these trees beautiful, but then the tree flow to the back and you see there's a flower and the, the flower flow to the back. So you see a cat and as you drive, so everything just flow on two sides of you. So this author, he was uh, driving. He suddenly saw there was a car and that car looks like his ex-girlfriend's car. He take a closer look and then he look in the license plate. Yes, it is his ex-girlfriend's car. So then his mind is no longer flowing. <laughs> his mind is um, wanting to find out who is driving that car. I mean, it must be that ex-girlfriend. And then there's a passenger next to her. Who is that passenger? Is it a boy or a girl? How old is he? Is she dating him? So all sort of thing comes to him and his mind become occupied. So his, when his mind become occupied, he no longer allow the scenery to flow on two sides of him. So his mind is occupied with all the questions that he want to ask. So what does he do next? <laughs> he follow the car, <laughs> right? So he is uh, completely, completely hooked on to the car. And then he starts to follow the car. And because he wants to know who is there, 
why is she taking a passenger and what is the relationship between the passenger and her and where are they heading to? At that time, and the author's mind is so occupied. So this is not moving with the flow of life, right? So every time when we are stuck in any situation, sometimes we are stuck for one hour, sometimes we are stuck for one day, and some people are stuck for years for the experience that they've been through and they are still stuck there. So every time when we are stuck, we are making a knot in our jar of heart, <laughs> jar of heart. So in this jar, how many knots have you put in? Every time when you are stuck, you put in jar of heart. So the more knot that you have in the jar of heart, what's going to happen to you? Will life be pleasant? Will life be joyful? Of course not. That will become your grudges. That will become your burden, source of depression, maybe a source of anxiety. In terms of our cultivation, our goal is to untighten the knot and then not creating a new one. We want to allow things to flow along our life, but not getting stuck. So in the previous session, I always talk about when things come, we deal with it. And when things are finished, we return to our center. So that's moving with the flow of life. Another example that I gave in the previous session is the shadow on the lake. So if you are on a lake, you are in a peaceful state and suddenly there's a flock of birds flying over. The flock of birds flying over will create some shadow in your lake. And when the bird is over, there shouldn't be any shadow on the lake. So why is there still shadow on the lake? And the more shadow that you hold on to your lake, the more burden that you have. We need to allow our life to flow continuously. Do not let our mind to hook on to something, to be attached to something. When we are attached to something or hook on to something, our mind become occupied and we cannot do anything else. Have the flow of life, in you and that it continue to flow. Isn't it true like water? Water continue to flow. Water does not stay in one place unless the water is in the puddle. But just imagine you are the water and you want to continue to flow from top to bottom along the stream. So this verse echoes very much with chapter two. Therefore, a saint does according to his nature without intention. This is, this is talking about Wu Wei. Teach without words. And chapter 19, observe simplicity and embrace original nature, reduce selfishness and lessen desire. So this is also another explanation on Wu Wei. This is just like another uh, synonym for Wu Wei. It's beautiful expression from Lao Tzu. So keep in mind, Lao Tzu say that um, uh, although the society is being insulted, people are being insulted, or the leader insult the citizen, or the people, but it's okay. Let's have hope. Let's have hope. If people have belief, then at leisure, they can limit their speech and still practice Wu Wei. We all have our big gate. Our big gate is our mouth. <laughs> because uh, based on the Buddhism teaching, there is a 10 bad action that we should avoid. And out of this 10 bad action, speech made up 40% of it. So the 10 bad action is greed, hatred, ignorance, foolish speech, lying, abusive speech, divisive speech, killing, stealing, and adultery. So when you committed all this, it's considered demerit. And uh, on this category, it's mind. And this category is speech. This category is body. There is a, a 10 bad action that we should avoid. And on the other hand, of course, there's a 10 good action. And the 10 good action is um, the opposite side of the 10 bad action. It's important to limit our speech because a lot of time when we come out from our mouth, it's flattering, gossiping. Women tend to gossip more than men. That's a fact. Sometimes when we talk, we have to be careful not to hurt anyone because our tongue can kill just like a, a knife without blood. So this is the significance of uh, limited our speech. This is the last 
phrase. All meritorious deeds are achieved, and all tasks are succeed. All people said, "I did naturally." Here, I want to point out to you this word, meritorious deed. So this word is meritorious deed. It's not just any deed. It's meritorious deed or service. Uh, accomplishment, achievement, good result, and work. So all these are meritorious accomplishment, meritorious achievement, meritorious good result, meritorious work. Okay, and then second one is the task. So task, uh, we can relate that as our daily task. There are two kinds of tasks. One is the divine task that you do meritorious tasks unto others. And then there's another one that we do for ourselves that to sustain our living, that we need to work, we need to uh, perfect our family affair, our marriage relationship, our parenting relationship. These are important. Here you see the arrow here. The arrow here, it means the same thing. It's just a synonym. So the first one is completion, finish and achieve. And this one, it's also in the same meaning too. So basically, it's talking about the divine mission, the holy mission, and the mundane tasks are all complete with success. So what does that mean? That means if we can deal with all things successfully and we do the down mission and we can complete our family mission, that means we don't need to come again. In other words, uh, we don't need to be reincarnated again. So all people say, I did it naturally. So this is the first time that Lao Tzu used the pronoun. All people say, I did it naturally. So all people, it means uh, the citizen, the people in the society, in the community, the common people, the good men and women, you and me, the practitioner, the Tao practitioner, the, the Buddhist practitioner, with Tao affinity and foundation. Okay, and uh, here I did it naturally because Lao Tzu's word is very simple. So we kind of have to figure out what he thinks. So there's other word choice. Uh, here I put down, I did it naturally. It can also be, I feel naturally. I did all this task, I feel naturally because no one forced me, I just follow my conscience. Um, I am like this naturally. I can do this because I'm like this naturally. It's just my natural instinct. And this is a natural part of me. Lao Tzu just went over the timing, the timing for the society of the, the people who have gone over five different era. The first one is without awareness. Second one is to hold dearly. Number three is compliment. Number four is fear. And number five is despise. Although there is Tao in the environment being changed over time, but there is hope. And the hope is that if people have faith, if the ruler has faith, and if they practice Wu Wei, then this is something that we, that we can look forward. It's the environment or the society that all people, they can accomplish their meritorious deeds and their human tasks completely with success. They do it naturally. So this verse actually echo with the first verse. Without awareness is the state of utopia. And it echoes with chapter 15, preserving us the uncarved wood. This one is the last verse for this chapter. So this cultivation, it, it means that we can do this and nobody forced me. I come to this meetup because I, I feel naturally to attend this meetup. Nobody called me, I'm not forcing to come. And I like to uh, attend this meetup. It's my natural conscience and my consciousness to tell me to do so. This echo with the first verse. So it's interesting that Lao Tzu used the character of Wu, Wu, because Wu is not often used in Tao Te Ching. In fact, it's seldom used. Probably this is the only one time. So war is made up of two parts. And we can see here, I kind of separate 
if you cut it out from the middle, it's the left and the right. And in reality, these are the same, it's just being mirror. And because uh, Chinese uh, calligraphy is very uh, balanced, that's why sometimes you often see that the stroke on the right comes with a curve. But in reality, it's just a mirror of the one on the left. So you can see it's almost like uh, two things coming together. And let's look at this one. So Wo, it's made out of uh, this symbol here, which means me, myself, I, and my. So this is all Wo. So this is a symbol of a weapon with three sharp edges. So coming back here, you see the, the picture, it's like uh, maybe they are facing each other or against each other, it really doesn't matter. It's two weapons identical from each other, but in the reverse image. So could it be that one is true self, the other one is false self? This picture really symbolizes the person who make up of this character have a true understanding about the true self and false self. Because in our life, we often have a constant conflict between ourselves. Oh, I want to eat more. And the other side say, no, Joanna, you're too fat. You need to be on diet. <laughs> so sometimes we have constant conflict. So this is the character of, of war. And it's very seldom that Lao Tzu use war. Lao Tzu use this Wu more often than war. P perhaps it's the only chapter that Lao Tzu use in this chapter, but the other chapter is Wu. In the previous chapter that we study, chapter four and chapter 13, Lao Tzu used one time here. And chapter 13, Lao Tzu used four time here. So Wu is uh, a common usage as I in the ancient text, such as analog and great learning. So in the ancient time, when the ancient sentence sages talk about I, they never use this one, they use this one. But in the modern time, we often use this one instead of this one. As I mentioned earlier, this chapter can be divided into two sections. So this one, the first five lines represent the decline in Tao. And then the bottom one represents that Lao Tzu's hopeful assertive to bring the Tao in a better environment. And this sentence being highlighted here, it's in the transitional verse. Without sufficient belief, they will not be trusted. So here it's a bar chart about the change of the environment and the people and the ruler and the Tao. So in the primeval era, they do not know they have it. And then next they hold dearly to it. It's because most people have virtue and then they complement it. and. Uh, the Tao needs to have some kind of reward in order to reinforce the people. So this is the next decline in Tao. The next one, they fear it. Why they fear it? Because there's a strict rules and next they despise it. So this is the stage of dictatorship. Let's ask ourselves, what kind of environment are we creating for ourselves? Are we in this stage, this stage, this stage, or this stage? I'm sure we are not in this too. <laughs> And uh, let's not create the environment for the people on this too. So I want to talk about the first verse in the primeval era, they do not know they have Tao. Primeval, it means the ancient time, the history before it can be documented by any written text. So this translation is from uh, Master Shi, Zhi Cao Zhong Dian Chuan Shi, and Master Wu, Wu Jing Yu Dian Chuan Shi. So this, is my translation about the decline of morality in people and ruler in five era. However, there are other translations that they use this meaning here, the highest being. Uh, this, this highest being is virtuous. And when, when the first phrase is used on the second one, it changed the whole setting for the whole paragraph. If we use the second red text here, the sentence can be interpreted as under a highest virtuous ruler, people are not aware of it. People are not aware of Tao 
or people are not aware of him. That means the ruler. Remember I say this chapter is short, <laughs> but it can be difficult to interpret or translate because the pronoun is missing. So we can only guess what Lao Tzu means on this chapter. So here it can be uh, people hold dearly to Tao or people hold dearly to him and vice versa. And because the first line talks about the ruler, therefore here it's, uh, it makes more sense to put the pronoun here as the ruler. Without sufficient belief, the ruler, he will not be trusted. A leisure, he, the ruler, limit in his speech. So the biggest difference between this version and this version is that I talk about the environment in different era, different era. But in other books translation, it talks about the environment in the same era concurrently. Okay, so that's the main difference. And uh, even in the Chinese text, there are people who talk about this version and this version. And, and because my teacher uh, used this um, perspective to talk about it, that's what you see today. And there's other Chinese scholar use this perspective. And I will say these are all okay, as long as we can reflect the teaching onto ourselves, onto our cultivation, it really doesn't matter which one is Lao Tzu referring to. So last thought, how to immerse oneself to Tao for long? The answer is number one. <laughs> so if we want to practice Tao for long, to immerse ourselves totally in Tao, number one is the way to go. Just uh, immerse yourself into Tao and when we do good deeds, don't recognize ourselves as a good deed and don't need other people to recognize us. After we finish it, we should let go. So if we can uh, achieve number one, at least we want to achieve number two. We want to hold Tao dearly into our heart and um, manifest uh, the Tao into our daily life and our speech and our behavior. I just complete my sharing on Tao Te Ching chapter 17. My next sharing will be chapter 18. If mistakes were made or say during today's sharing, I ask the forgiveness from the Heavenly Mother, Buddha Maitreya, Jigong Buddha, Sutun Simu, Patriarchs, Elders, and Senior Master and Junior Master Lee. Thank you.